Holy Tony Town Planning Commission, please come to order. Would you stand for the pledge of the flag, please, Jim or George? George. Pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let the minutes reflect the members that's present. Okay. Welcome everybody here this evening. These are non-paying people coming to uh, okay. <laughs> the Commission members should have received the minutes for April 25th, 2016. Is there any correction, corrections or additions to those minutes? No, sir. Okay, I'll entertain a motion if they're not. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of accepting the minutes? April 25th, 2016, five saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. George, I'll try to get finished before your blood runs out. <laughs> <laughs> Delegations and action items, Cannabis MD, presentation of preliminary site plans for 5300 20 Town Pike. Jim, you want to start us out on that? So look, uh, should look very similar to the concept that you saw uh, last month, uh, just with a heck of a lot more blocks and notations on it this time around. Um, the uh, propane tanks and such are, are called out on there. Um, there's a handful of, um, we've had a couple reviews, CDM and myself have reviewed it, sent some comments out that need to be revised, but mostly just administrative stuff. and. Um, I don't really have a whole lot to say about it, and I'll let the fellows from Canada and D speak or field questions, however you want to proceed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you gentlemen have, have anything you want to add to it? Okay. Please do. Uh, Andy Cohen, Canada MD. How are you guys doing? Uh, I don't know that we have a lot to add. We can just fill you in a little bit on the process. Um, Jim's been great. We've been working with him regularly. Uh, I think the one thing that may be worth mentioning is we went to Carroll County and spoke to them, um, got their input, um, <clears throat> got the things that they wanted done, not just from the site perspective, but also from a building permits perspective, and um, got them comfortable with what we're doing and what our plans are. and. And so that process is underway as well. Of course, they I think they defer to you all on the site. They, they, they take a good bit of money from us, but they said that their comments are just for, what they say they were just for? Advisory. Advisory, right. So we're underway there, and they, they, they were fine with everything. We had a meeting with several of them. Um, the site guy was there as well. Right. We, we held on. Um I guess a combination building permit submittal conference and pre-submittal conference for the site development plan uh, kind of rolled it all into one meeting. So uh, there were representatives, there were plan reviewers and the, uh, the director for permits and inspections, some of the bureau chief was there and then the bureau chief for uh, development review came down and, and talked through that piece of it. So it, it's always a, a uh, a little bit of a gray area in terms of, of Carroll County's development review piece because really we do have our own authority and yet we have adopted several chapters of the county code that they administer for us. So it, it's kind of a, I suppose, professional courtesy to try to address their comments the best that we can. You know, we, we're not obligated to. But we also don't want to get to a situation where we always kind of ignore their comments and eventually they say, well, we're not going to bother enforcing this for you anymore if you'd never take our advice on it. So we don't want to get into that situation. So while technically their stuff is advisory, usually we, we try to address their comments the best we can. And every once in a while we run into one where it's like, I, I get where you're coming from, but we don't think this is a big deal, so we're going to let it go. Um, and usually we walk that line pretty well with them so 
Yeah, I mean, we've continued to take, as I said last time I was here, we've continued to be as transparent to anybody and everybody that wants us to be. Um, so um, the engineer came up with 15 or so comments, on, which we will incorporate into the next round. Josh has already worked on many of them. Um, I know it's unrelated to you all in, in your duties here, but the Maryland Medical Cannabis Commission had a, their first public meeting last week since October. Um, and the, things remain on schedule. Uh, they are going to award these licenses in the summer, in July or August. Um, and it's, it's all still a go from that front. Um, uh, the public is none too pleased with the delays. I mean, this is a year and this is a one year delay. As a matter of fact, the Maryland program will now have the distinction of having the longest amount of time elapsed between when the law was voted in and when the program is actually operating. It's not quite a distinction that the lawmakers are, are happy to now own. It seems to be status quo for the state of Maryland, though. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, it doesn't make a lot of sense to some of us. But anyway, the process is still on, and we're, we still have hopes of going through this process with you all and doing whatever it is you all need us to do to get, uh, I think the goal here is a zoning letter. Is that what it's called? Site plan approval and then a zoning certificate. Yeah. Um, so whatever you need us to do, we'll continue to do. And we'd love to be in a position to have that. I don't know if that's possible next month or whether it takes one more month. I, it's, you all tell us what you need. Okay. So Jim, is it the intent of next month for approval on the preliminary? Um, hopefully we'll have all, all the approval letters from the, I mean, there aren't a lot of agencies that are going to be reviewing it because we're not looking at any, any, um, well, disturbance potentially as right. It, it, and, and I'm guessing that the work that's on here is probably within what was the previous limit of disturbance from the earlier site plan. I know that's something that, um, Clay Bilek had commented about. So hopefully we won't be looking at erosion, sediment control, um, no stormwater management, um, no grading. So really it's going to be landscape, forest conservation, um, and of course the building permit review, which typically comes after, but they may be able to get that started ahead of time. Um, so really it's going to be us and CDM and, um, you know, maybe three county agencies. Okay. So it should, I'm hoping we'll have approval letters well in advance of next month. So and, and again, between preliminary and final, we're really just looking at a, a change to the title block. So whether, whether we want to have that ready to roll, you know, assuming all the approval letters are in, um, you know, we can talk about that later in the meeting or just be ready to go either way next month. Well, if everything comes in, then next month will be on the agenda for approval. For it. Now, is that next month a preliminary approval or final approval? Preliminary. Okay. And then what takes place between preliminary and final? Very little. <laughs> not, not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. That, that's what I was saying, pretty much a change of the, the title block. Is it possible right. to do those in the same meeting or not? Normally we don't like to do it that way. Uh, I guess it all depends on any comments that would come in as far as the letters. Mm -hmm. okay. if, uh, if everything... Like I said, there's 14 items, if they're all clear. I do have one question, though. I noticed, looking at the site plan, is there an intent on putting some type of sign up because there is no okay? No signage whatsoever. Okay. As a matter of fact, we're, we're not even going to repaint that building on the outside. Um, maybe some minor touch-up. We're, we're not looking to draw attention it's, it would be unnecessary to draw attention to that. So, George, you had a question. Do you know if there's any other group attempting a startup program like this in Carroll County, working in Carroll County? So I asked uh, when we were in Carroll County. I asked the the permit guys if they had had any other groups visit, and they said no. They said they had originally heard that 
There were some other groups pursuing Carroll County as a location, but none of those groups have contacted them as of yet. Now, look, understand that we are, our attempt, one of our attempts or objectives here is to be as ready as we can for when we win the license, as opposed to other groups who I'm well aware of are not investing time and money until they know we've won. We have intentionally decided to invest lots of resources so that if, we, if we're fortunate enough to win, we can get started building our facility and growing our crop and dispensing as quickly as possible. So there may be some folks out there uh, that are planning on locating in Carroll County, but we just, we don't know about them and nor did they. About the septic, the existing septic there, is that something we're gonna to require to have pulled out or? Um, it's actually public sewer, right? It, the building is the building is sewered um, right. according to the previous site plan um, right. and the health department did not have record of any um, operating septic on the on the property okay so if the building and I'm unclear as to the septic the status of the septic on the property I my assumption would have been that this building was constructed after the, the sewer system was in existence and would have connected when it was first built. So I'm not sure why there would be a septic on the property. Um, why it, would be. But, so it, mentions, but, you know, it mentions a septic tank. Yes. I don't know if that's been visually confirmed that it's there or who, if it was an assumption. That up? Who brought the septic system I, up? That was me. That was him. Yeah, I, I walked around the building and saw a clean out in the back of the building. Usually when you see a clean out surrounded by a large field, that's a septic tank with a drain field. Right. And so I just assumed it was a septic tank. Okay. So we'll we'll definitely nail it down one way or the other. But um, as I said, the the health department had no record of of septic on the on the site, so I did check with them when I saw the comment. Okay. So because I wanted to make sure if there was that it had been properly closed or abandoned rather, mm -hmm. um, but they didn't show anything. So. Okay. It's sewer long before that building was put up. Yes, yes. That, that right. As I said, that was my assumption was because sewer's been here for almost seven, almost seventy years, I guess. Yeah. Um, On a somewhat related, are, are you purchasing the property or leasing the property? We have a fully executed lease contingent on winning, of course. Right. Uh, but we have also negotiated a purchase agreement because we do not want to be a tenant of that landlord. Okay. Um, so if we win this license, we fully expect to buy that building. And again, we have it's all negotiated already. We don't have to. He's a challenging, you know, landlord. So we don't want to be in business with him. And he knows that. Or he knows we don't want to be in business with him. Got it. And he knows he wants to sell the building anyway. I'm sure you all want him to sell the building too. How many prices does he have on that building? It's a good story. I, I got a, here's a funny story for you. So when we first found the building, he had it listed at $2.75 a foot. So when we determined that we were interested in the building, we sent him an LOI at $2.75 a foot. And he came, but his, his um, comments on the LOI is it's two seventy five for the first year and it's $4 for the second year. <laughs> so we, you know, it was, you can let, we weren't really laughing I at the time. I can understand that too. That's you know, I mean, that's bait and switch. It's unethical. It's, it's wrong on a variety of fronts. And then by the same token, his purchase price on the building was $2.3 but when we told him we wanted to buy it, potentially, it, all of a sudden it rose to $3 million. Mm -hmm. And it's just, that's the kind of landlord, unfortunately. Well, it continues yeah. to go up. Well, it, it, he can't, it can't go up anymore now because it's all <laughs> in a document. Thank goodness. All right. All right. Anybody Anything else? Any other comments? Scott, anything on your end? No, this would be, and by the way, I, one more quick thing. I know, I don't know how much this interests you or not. The, the interior of the building is fully designed 
we've hired the general contractor, we've already bid it out, we've, we already have the price on it all, um, and it is all completely finished. You know, there's a full set of architectural drawings on that building, and the mechanicals is, you know, the most substantial piece because we're putting HVAC in that building completely and humidif dehumidifiers, et cetera. So I, I don't know if you have any interest in that, but that shows you the amount of work we've put in, and, and we're re I mean, we're ready. We're ready to go. Do you know if there will be a license issued to Carroll County? Say that again? Do you know if there will be a license issued to Carroll County? By who? Whoever's issuing the license. Well, they, they don't issue them by, they're not issued by county, city. How are they issued? They, they issued, they're issued to the applicant. They could potentially, so there's 15 of these that are going to be given out in the entire state. 15 licenses? Yeah, 15. They could potentially all be in any county in the state. Okay. Now, they, they're looking for geographical diversity. Uh, they don't want them all on the eastern shore or in the city or out west. They would love to see a some diversity geographically, which is one of the reasons, you know, initially why we were attracted to Carroll County, as well as when we made the calls early on, Carroll County was very receptive, believe it or not, to us coming. Is it a one-time license or is it a renewal every so many years? It's good. The license is a four-year license, and then you have to renew every two years. And it is a, it's a robust regulatory <laughs> There's a component to it. They're our partners. They are in our business every day. Um, inspections, all kinds of tracking, exchange of information. You know, they're keeping a close eye on this. This is not just go open and send us a check once a year. What group, what, what uh, division are they under? BHMH. It's the, um, the Maryland Medical Cannabis Commission is what was created and it's a part of DHMH department. Where are they located? Wall, uh, over by Wabash Avenue. Patterson Avenue, I think, is... Uh, yeah. Where at? Baltimore? Baltimore, Baltimore City, City, yeah. Baltimore City. Uh, Patterson, down by Patterson Park? No. Oh. It's, it's near Mondawmin. Yeah. Right. Oh, Mondawmin? Okay. Okay. Where are the uh, OU's? Okay. okay. Okay, with no other comments, then hopefully we'll see you next month. Okay, thank you all. Have a good month. Thank you, guys. Have a great one. Thank you. Once down the elevator. They purchase the property. When can we discuss our third base issue of Memorial Park? Once yeah. after they purchase, right? But right. At any point. Okay, that won't have any effect on any of the plans or anything like that. In a separate meeting, I've already approached them. Great. Okay. And their comment was, is, you know, we can't do anything to any building. Well, right. They didn't, they That's why I didn't want to bring it up in front of them. I just. So they have any problems. Okay. Okay, next item, approval of the Carroll County Annual Planning Report. <coughs> I guess everybody had a chance to look at it. Um, I guess the only question I had was the, an, an, the annexing on Stumptown Road. That was those two houses, right? Actually, we had three. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Let me back up. One of them may not have been effective until this year. I'm trying to think yeah, 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 um, well, right. yeah. Okay. So the Stumptown one consists of two houses on the west side, and then Stumptown one was one on the east side. Okay. And I guess the Bollinger Park will be next year then, right?
We I mean, hope. It's, it's not going to be annexation. It's not going to happen for a couple of months. Okay, so it'll be next month. year. But yeah, we would go by the effective date. Yeah. Okay. Then Maybe I'm, next month. Maybe <laughs> it's either well, June or July. Okay. Then I have no other comments unless someone else has. Scott, do you want to make any, com any more com any comments? You just want our, us Matt, to approve it. Two changes made to the draft document. Westminster came in to the road section and added a couple of city roads that were not initially in that list. And then um, actually Ned Kuhnman, you know, former planning director for the county, who works for the bridge, but he made a change on behalf of Hampstead. He saw something in the water and sewer right up that was not correct as far as the classification on the property change. Okay, so I guess what we're looking at is approval, so I can sign the letter. I move for approval. Okay. Okay, open for discussion. Any other comment? Jim, did you have anything additional for it that you had seen? I was going to ask that before. <laughs> I'll stop talking. Because I went, I went through a lot of it. Yeah, I, I work with Scott to get the data. Right you, in, you did all the work here. anyway, right? <laughs> well, bits of it. <laughs> All right, so the motion is for approval. All those in favor of that motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? I've already signed the letter. Good thing it We don't have to tackle Scott on the way out. <laughs> All right. Ordinance and agreement for review, none. Planning report, Jim, your report. We already talked about the Canada MD piece, um, and uh, mm -hmm. Chairman Parker and I, or Chairman Parker, just signed off on the um, the red line changes for the senior center. We talked a little bit about that previously. That they hit rock, and and the decision was made to uh, go with a shallower line that required a pump rather than strictly gravity flow. So now it'll be pumped up to a point and then flow from from um, the next manhole down by gravity. Is there a timeline? For completion at all um, they i understand i just before the meeting heard they were working this week they, they had so. a, a jackhammer all day today and they oh, didn't good. go very far but they was working hard so the the hope is within a week from when they begin work again uh, assuming they get a week's worth of weather that they can work in um so hopefully they'll be out of there next the, week the pump's going to handle all the water that comes off the line is it it's, there is, um, there is an overflow um, line in, in the manhole where the pump is going to be. The original plan was there was going to be, I think, a three inch drain at the bottom of the sump or manhole that was going to attenuate, make the flow very slow um, so that the water wouldn't get down the hill in the park until after the first flush of any rain event, so that it wouldn't, there'd be no risk of it inundating the the, um, the culvert crossing or anything on, on um, George Street. Um, so the pump is really just handling that, the equivalent of that three inch flow, which is a very small flow. There's been, there was a lot of discussion on the, how frequently the pump would cycle and whether that was gonna you know, create a, a, a maintenance issue for the pump to be cycling on and off too often and things like that. That's what caused a lot of the delay was trying to get the right specifications on the pump. At any rate, um, the three inch line is what's being pumped, but there is a larger overflow that the um, a larger storm event would, would fill the manhole and then go out and overflow and that will not be pumped. That will still be gravity. On the surface. It's, it's, it's closer to the surface, um, and, and that's really just to handle larger, larger storm events that, that we don't really manage um, stormwater for. That, um, that, that's pretty standard, that, and, and I don't have the stormwater code in front of me, but we used to manage for the 100-year storm, and now I think we only manage for the 10-year storm, which is pretty much 
typical. Our code used to be a little more restrictive than it is now, but we're getting a higher water quality peak component for the more frequent rain events. So anyhow, in a normal rain event, the pump will handle all of it. In a really extreme rain event, there's an overflow line that will keep it from overflowing and it'll go out by gravity from like the top, the upper part of the manhole. And I can probably show it real quick. And this pump is tied into the senior center's electrics, electricity? Yes. And we decided last month that it was a generator there or it wasn't? Um, I don't think we decided anything. No, we talked about it, but I couldn't remember. I think it was unknown. No, I think they have, they have an alarm panel and such. Um, Is that point where right. does it go? Right. Um, it ends up in the same place. Oh, okay. It just gets there faster. Okay. So back to the idea of the generator, if we have one of those colossal storms with all the rain and or even just a smaller storm and we lose power, yeah. I mean, what's their it, solution for that? If it's a smaller storm, um, well if if they have if they have a power failure. Mm -hmm. You didn't that, notice when that, you drove by. Was uh, there, you didn't so notice in the back of the building. Like uh, I can't remember if that is air conditioner. Well, that's what I was wondering is, I mean, if there is standing water until it gets up to the point of overflow, yeah. it's not going to no, cause anything. That was, that was a question. I don't think they put one in there. <laughs> right. It's not going to happen. Lights went out. Like they said, the parking lot turns into a lake or something like that. Right. So it's going to drain. It's just going to wait until it gets up to the overflow point to do it. Yes. Okay. So hopefully, um, hopefully the contractor will be at least out of the park in the next week or so. Um, I've had some email exchanges with um, the developer for Creekside. Um, as I said in my report, uh, some of the property owners, which includes us, don't want the trees that were on the uh, landscape plan for Creekside. And those of you who have been around for several years might recall that the developer wanted to buffer the water tower because that was the way into the subdivision and they wanted their potential buyers not to see the water tower but to see trees on the way in. Um, they never bothered doing that and um, much like the issue of the sidewalk that was supposed to be on Break Iron Street the area between the existing fence on the site and the curb is maybe a 25 degree slope in parts, so it really isn't conducive to a sidewalk. Um, so in discussion with the developer, we've come to at least conceptual agreement that they can put the sidewalk on the other side of Brake Iron, which is still going to be city property um, for the first couple feet along the curb there is, is city. And um, essentially for the same reason with the slope and such, I checked with Public Works and they would prefer not to have the trees planted along Break Iron Street next to the water tank. Um, they don't want to have to maintain them and, and keep them cut back because it, it's, and it is a pretty tight spot really. So hopefully, um, 
hopefully we will be able to come up with an alternate location for some of those trees. There's, there's four uh, trees that were supposed to be in front yards and under the old landscape ordinance, every property was supposed to have a tree in the front yard and some of the homeowners don't want them. And there were supposed to be 22 Leland Cypress trees along Break Iron Street along the water tower, which Public Works would rather not go there. So we could possibly put some closer to the stormwater management pond, possibly on the strip that connects the development to East Baltimore Street, but that's going to be contingent on the final design for the driveway that's gonna service that last house on Baltimore Street that used to be off of Wilson Avenue. Um, um, while I'm thinking about it, Wilson Avenue addresses have been updated, so not only, yeah, so not only is there no longer a Wilson Avenue, now there are no longer Wilson Avenue addresses. So the ranch house now has an Amicus Street address and the water tower now has a break iron address. Great. Um, so that's finally a done deal. Wilson Avenue is gone. Um, that's good. I feel good about that. So, so once, we, once they nail down the driveway, you know, there may be opportunity to put some of those, um, you know, planting units in that, that strip between Baltimore Street and, and Break Iron Street, um, which uh, I, haven't, I haven't heard back from the developer at this point. You know, I, I just suggested that we keep the number of planting units on the site um, and find other locations for them. And that was kind of the last communication at this point. Didn't they add several trees between the center houses? They did. And does that make a dent in the numbers you're talking about? Or? Um, it, it didn't, their intent was not to modify the landscape plan with that. Um, that was just I privacy. Think, I think we would be that. open to having that conversation, um, but if we can get some more, some more trees around the site, it, it's only gonna be for the better. Right. So just not trees on a you know, 30 degree slope that we have to maintain. So. Did you say the plan called for a tree in front of every house out there? Yes. I don't remember that. Yeah, that and that's the old landscape yeah. ordinance that... that a tree in front of every house. And a every chicken lot. in every pot. <laughs> yeah, every lot. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, I mean, keep in mind that plan was going through um, a good 12 years ago, Way too. Back, yeah, so. we'll see it. Well, actually, I think it took about eight years. I think it actually started in the in the um, in the late '80s. For Creekside, wow, yeah, it, it had a long, tortuous, tortuous history. Trees are okay, but they can be put. They can cause a lot of problems where you put them. Yeah. Yes, they can. Right. So I mean, we we're not going to want to plant them, for example, you know, on the bank of the stormwater pond or close to the top of the bank or anything like that. So you wouldn't want them on an inclined bank. Right. So, you know, so hopefully we can find spaces elsewhere in the subdivision for them. And, um, you know, I, I did discuss it with, with the um, Carroll County landscape um, person, John Bowman. And, um, you know, again, it kind of comes back to we've adopted the county code and by not requiring a tree in every front yard, again, you guys have the authority or in the case of a red line plan, you know, we can figure it out. But this was, I mean, we're talking about 26 planting units altogether. So we wanted to let you guys in on it and see if you had some suggestions one way or the other. Um, but I haven't seen a revised plan or anything like that at this point. So, um, you know, we can, we can treat it as red line changes, but we can also make sure that, you know, we come back to you guys with them and make sure it looks decent if you, if the commission would, you know, prefer you that. to put that some type of motion or agree that um, we agree to the red line? Well, we don't really have what a... It? Pardon me? What is it? Really? We don't have it. Right, I mean, I guess the, if we wanted to put it to a motion, it would be the if you treats. wanted to authorize Chairman Parker to approve red lines um, without it coming back to you. Well, we if, brought if it you back, so we wanted. To, I wanted to make sure it came back here, so we just brought it back now. Yeah. So I guess the question is, do we want? What do we want to do about the twenty-six trees? Find new homes for them on the site. Stick with the original plan. Oh, it'd be nice to be able to if, if you could find. 
Preferably. Preferably on site. Yes, that would and be. That's the, what we talked about. Right. But, I would move for that. Well, placing if we them can't bring on it back site next month, we'll at the right spot is important. Right. I hope you think about that when you do yeah. that. And I, I it, it gets a little bit dicey. I, I would certainly like to rely on the expertise of, of John Bowman and resource management, but at the same time, per the old code, you know, it's um, those those four trees present a problem for him because technically he would you know he would deny it if the plan didn't have a tree in every front yard so that that's the kind of thing we were talking about before where we can do something we can do what we want but i usually try to at least be you know aware and talk things through with with the different county agencies when we do something that's a little different than what they would typically approve or typically want to see. Well, we don't want to step on someone's toes that we count as our experts. Right. right. Authority. Right. So really, it's a matter of, it's a matter of, you know, the old code, tree in every front yard, the new code, buffer for right. corner lots. Right. I don't really like the new code so much. I'd rather have the trees out front along the streets than have no street trees and then have a, a vegetative screen on the corner lots only on the side yards. Um, but that's what the new landscape ordinance requires. Now we can, as a planning commission, you guys can still require, you know, uh, so many trees along the street or, you know, if you want to see a tree in every front yard, we can certainly go beyond the minimum requirement of the landscape ordinance. Um, but didn't you say that some of the residents don't want? Right, right. So rather than, I don't want a tree filling up my gutter in front, or obstructing my view, or and the th the thing that makes this a little reasons. And, and when when this subdivision was approved, and when the old landscaping ordinance was in effect, builders were putting up lots of spec houses. They were you know coming in getting you know 10 permits at a time and when creekside finally built they put up one model home and then they built as they got contracts on lots so they didn't really do any you know any houses to put up and just try to sell later they put them up once they had a contract on it so in this case they didn't and typically the trees in the front yard go in once the house is built because they're not going to put a tree in the front yard and then have to work around it with all the heavy equipment and stuff. So the scenario kind of changed from what had been the norm, which would be like the builder slapping up a bunch of houses and then trying to sell them. Well, here they've got a contract and the person's like, hey, I don't want that tree. You know, the, the house isn't in yet, the tree's not in yet, and now they've got a property owner who is saying, I don't want that in my yard. So it does create a different kind of dynamic than you know the world we used to know where they just put the houses up planted the trees and but then put them on the market. 26 of them are, are not saying. No four of them are like that and we're number five we count for 22 trees. Okay. So They're about water tent, water yeah, tent. I mean, and I don't I don't know if in 2005 or six when the plans were signed I don't know if Public Works was given the opportunity to comment on the landscape plan or not. Um, I remember that. So, because it was on city property, it would become like the as city's to, trees. As to if they wanted trees next to the right, right. <clears throat> so, where are we going with this? Make them put the tree in the front yard. And if we have, to, if we make them put the tree in the front yard, where I'm going to is, then we should do it too. So. What's the right thing to do? That's right. What is the right thing to do? Yeah. What is the right thing? Because those trees are going to blow leaves over into gutters down the road a the couple town of years. The want the trees too, but if one has to do it, we're making one do it, the other one should I do understand it. that. So, so why don't we, I don't like why don't we put it back on Jim to see if there's a spot with on the site to put all 26 trees. If there's an issue and we can't, 
then bring it back next okay. month and we'll make a decision on what we should do. Oh, that's going to be a good decision. Yeah, Pardon? is there a specification on types of trees or size or anything like that? Um, at the fifth probably. Can we I just put a bonsai in every yard and be done with it? Um, a what? The, <laughs> a bonsai. The, um, the plans do require a certain caliper tree. Um, you know, it, it, it goes either by, um, let's see. I think it's the, the caliper of the, of the trunk, the, the width of the trunk. I think it's like two or three inch caliper tree that has to go in for the front yard trees. Um, the evergreens, I think, are done by like three gallon pot or something like that. that depending on the type of tree is the way they measure it. I think it's like either the, the um, you know, bald and burlapped or certain gallon container for certain plants or, you know, a certain caliper trunk. Um, so it really depend, depends upon the specific tree. What kind of trees are there? But um, I don't know what the four in the, in the front yards would be. Um, it, no, typically. I'm asking because, you know, we did a big plan, remember? Yeah. The thing. Mm -hmm. We kept that trees. Yeah. We some yeah. And that, that was a thought I had was possibly even to put them in the, one of the parks or something like that. Um, and I did check with um with bob mitchell our parks director who was eager to get you know any trees he could but um but this again that would be time. that would yeah. be taking them off of the that's site not, that's which... not a good, good practice to start right i mean i agree with i understand what you're saying but it's not a good practice to start i mean it would be definitely they, they, they should stay on that development if, if it's all possible i don't disagree with that but i'm saying Well, let's say ideally all of them, or you know, at least two thirds of them, would remain there. I mean, that gets them approximately 18. That would they'd have to find space for, and then we can, they can put the rest in one of our lots. Yeah. So if push comes to shove, are we okay with at least two thirds of them staying in that location? We got some dead ones right beside that building right there. We always They're not do. dead yet. They will be. Who will be placing these trees? Who will decide the spot they plant the tree in? That's that's what we're trying that's to what figure out. Doing now. Right. Yeah. So we can. I I I think he should come in here and talk to us. Okay. I don't know if we need to go that far. I mean, we're beating up all, all this time talking about a couple trees. Yeah, I know, but and. As long as they give put Jim, them in my yard, I don't care. No, give Jim the opportunity to see if they, if they can find a spot on the property to plant them. Mm -hmm. If they can't, then bring it back next month. We'll talk about it. If they have to put some somewhere else, then the developer should be the one that has to plant them somewhere else. Yes. Can you yeah. go into something? Because that, that's their yeah. obligation to provide right. trees. The, the, the hard... Right, right. So it's, it's their, it should be at their cost. Right. We have... I mean, we, we kind of have three paths. The, the, you know, ultimate hard line is you plant it exactly the way it is on the plan. Mm -hmm. the, but we don't want that. The, the, um, so that was, yeah, that was the, I say the soft, the, trees. the soft line. <laughs> I say forget the trees. Is, well, no. on site. is we it's come up with site. alternate locations with them all being somewhere on the site and we allow them to do it as a red line change, which just requires Jim's signature and mine on the red line changes so it's documented so that the county knows what they're inspecting and what has to survive a year and and so on Jim, we put a whole bunch that's down that's their easiest way the the third way the kind of middle of the road <laughs> middle of the road is that they come back before you with an amended landscape plan but all right that down too there you all agree to that I agree. Yeah. Okay. Let's move. Right. Let's move on. Okay. Yep. Next thing, these we'll trees will be dead before we get them planted. That's right. <laughs> okay. Nobody's listening to what I said. I know because there is no Wilson Avenue. But can we put them down through there somewhere for over the sidewalk? Yeah. That uh, that that's, was, that that'd be his decision because he's he's I the one. I think you mentioned that originally, right? I did, right. I did right. suggest that. Yes. Who owns Wilson Avenue now? There is no Wilson know, Avenue. Who owns the land? I know it's, I know land it's gone, but there's some land there. there that was Creekside. there. Creekside. Still. Creekside owns the land. To put a tree. Yep. Right? <laughs> Am I right or wrong? 
So the still yeah. land is still there. Yes, land is so still there. So we could put a tree. Yeah, I'm sure some of them can fit there. But you got to remember, there's also going to be a driveway coming in through there too. Through the back though, right? Right. Not across where it's at now. It's the only thing that I know is that it's not going to span the whole distance. It's not going to go from Baltimore Street to Brake Iron. Right. The previous property owner had agreed to the driveway coming off of Brake Iron. Property sold. The new owner wants it to come off of Baltimore Street. Oh, yeah. Will State Highway yeah. allow that? And State, oh, yeah. State Highway has said they will allow a driveway provided it does not connect through to Brake Iron Street. So they will allow the restoration of the driveway. Um, it will have to be, you know, blacktop so many feet back from, from Route 140 and through discussions with the owner and the city attorney and, and I think Henry was probably there as well. We talked about whether we should hold them to, um, you know, the rigid standard of, you know, concrete or blacktop for the driveway, but we know that that property is intended eventually for redevelopment, um, that it's just being rented right now, but the ultimate intent is to redevelop the site because it is a commercial site. Um, so knowing that, we're not, we kind of debated whether we should make them do the blacktop driveway or allow them to blacktop off the road a certain point and then restore it the way it was, which was gravel. So the consensus was let them do the remainder of it in gravel so that it's not locked in so much with the future access for the site. So we'll see how it plays out, but I don't think they've, I don't think the developer has worked it out with the property owner for sure. And I don't think they have completely worked out the sidewalk plans for the other Baltimore Street property that get the sidewalk in front. Right. So we've got, we've got another I think it's June. Yeah, I think it's in a couple the weeks. The drive for that property will have to be on the land at the property the house is on. So it won't be put on the original it, Wilson Avenue land because that's owned by Creekside. It, so is have, there going to be enough room to go in there and turn and go in the garage? The, the doors front the old Wilson Avenue. We don't want them on Wilson Avenue. We want trees. I know that. We want trees. I'm just using that as reference. So the the I driveway, we the, the the piece of the piece of property that Creekside owns that connects the subdivision to Baltimore Street. I, I don't have the plat in front of me. I wasn't expecting to get into this level of detail, but yeah, it, it's I believe it's like 40 feet wide. So a driveway is going to be 10 to 12 feet wide. Not on that ground. But there, and it's, it's very vague, but the, the, there is a deed reference for that, that house on East Baltimore Street, um, formerly the Sherrill property now. It's, um, I'm not sure if it's an LLC, it's Wilson Bounds is the owner, um, but I don't know if it's under his name or under an LLC name. But a portion of it will you know come from the driveway but then a portion of it will be on the creekside property because they have in in the deed is access for that property across the creekside parcel so it, it they they are obligated to provide access so you know it's only going to be 10 or 12 feet of the you know 30 or 40 whatever width it is but we need to know where that's going to be before we start talking about putting trees there so we need to know is it coming off of baltimore street in which case we put more trees towards the back or is it coming off the back in which case we can put more trees towards baltimore street and that i have not gotten a response yet so i don't think they have worked it out i suspect like has been the routine with creekside it get, everything gets put on the back burner and then somebody says, hey, we got to finish this up and get our surety back. And then they're all hot and heavy to move forward, but they haven't done any work in the meantime to get us really able to move forward. So, so we still have the sidewalk issues. We still have the driveway issue. Um, and now we've got the issue of finding homes for trees that people don't want. So, I mean, that's a minor well, one. Well, they, still have, out, but they still haven't finished the road. Where this all started from, because I can remember when this all started about Wilson Avenue. 
where are they going to leave their monument? Back at the back or up at the front? Because that's where it all started when they wanted to put it in the front. Right. The monument. The Creekside. The Creekside sign. Yeah. They. That's where it all started when they wanted to put it in the front. No, no. Actually, way back. Let's go back to the very first time that we started doing this. Access to that development was supposed to be close to that. That's right. Right. And. State Highway denied the access. That's right. And uh, so through negotiations and somehow free money, they got the road that they have right now coming into the shopping center. But in the interim, Streetscape came, and the access, the driveway, the apron was gone because they denied that access. So that's the story of Wilson Avenue. Wilson Avenue. It's as old as a town. Huh? Wilson Avenue is as old as a town. Yes, it was. Wilson it Avenue is gone, absolutely. George. Absolutely. It's as old as a town. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, see, Wilson Jim, Avenue Jim, really okay. was never a road. That's, that's, Wilson's gone. Okay. That's right. Okay. That's, Jim, Wilson let's Avenue move on. 65 years ago. <laughs> I don't want to give up the trees or Wilson Avenue. I don't know. <laughs> well, I'd like to have the trees on Wilson Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, In memory of. The town planning association um, has made a, a recommendation to support the annexation of all the park annexations of the county commissioners. So it took some time. Um, there's one, one more step along in the process. Um, our public hearing is scheduled for June 8th for the, the next parent council workshop. Good part about that is nobody knows where Bonnaker Park is. Most of them out that away. Really? Anyhow, so hopefully that will be voted on next Next to Wilson Avenue. Next to Wilson Avenue. And, um, and no, we are not going to build a Wilson Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's not an idea. That's a pretty good idea. So that's driving forward, and the last thing was really um, talking about the, the signs. Signs, right. Um, get into that after Scott does his spiel because Jay's not here with any legal ideas tonight. Been very patient. Uh, does, does anybody have questions on any of the active projects other than um, Creekside? What is Wilson Avenue? I was going to say, someone's going to ask about Wilson Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we have enough just in Creekside. So we finished with all the discussion. Carol Viss did everything there. We Carol Viss is about finished, right? You issued four, right? Ten units left. Including the four that you just put out, or? After those four. After those four. There's okay. still ten left. And sheets. They're going to pour the foundation out there. So it looks like they're pouring a foundation. They are doing a foundation. Yeah, the model, they, they did apply for a model house, um, but I've, I've heard they've sold addition, uh, at least one additional lot, but I haven't seen paperwork for the second one yet. Okay. And you said we're actually using that road. Yeah. You have anything from Jay or not? No. Okay. He's having fun in Vegas. Good for him. <laughs> Scott? All right. Okay. And we'll update old business on the electronic message, message board display. And you want to yeah, move sure. us right on into that and what so, you. Um, in your packet, I, I kind of cut and paste some excerpts from the, from the sign code um, that. that are related to this. Um, as, as you know, we, we currently allow the message board signs in the general business district with planning commission approval. Um, 
we do not regulate the displays in terms of you know intensity or frequency of the image changing anything like that we just limit it to community events um, public service type messages like if there were an emergency of some sort or products and services provided on the site of the sign so other than community and public service things you can't advertise for another business with these signs it has to be specific to the business on the premise where the sign is so for example Wance can't use it to advertise um, the mini storage next door to them um, things like that so that's that's the current that's the status quo so for years we've been hearing from the schools and from the fire department and now the city would like to put one of these in the park as well um, and we have had at least one request from a downtown business just inquiring as to whether they could use one or not um, so the red text in here are just some ideas that that I thought might at least generate some discussion um, it, it, admittedly I'm not a huge fan of these things um, but I understand you know, from the business perspective if other jurisdictions are allowing them people feel like they're at a disadvantage if you know you can have it in Westminster or Sykesville perhaps but not Tawny Town. I, I don't I don't specifically know if Sykesville you know I know they've got a historic district and everything so they may not allow them but um, in general terms you're seeing them more and more frequently in more and more places um, so it seems to be the way things are going um, one thing that I do feel fairly strongly about is for the downtown district um, there there's language in the code that that's very difficult to enforce in the general provisions of the sign code that signs are supposed to be harmonious with the site that they're on that is very difficult to enforce um, there have been some in my opinion very professionally done decent signs that really did not match the character of the building that they were affixed to or in the window of but they were frankly effective decent looking signs um, so I tend to be very lenient on that piece in terms of you know what really is harmonious with the site especially when it's you know in the downtown area because it's not like we're building a new building and we're coordinating the monument sign with the building it's you know people come and go and want to put up their sign for their business and then the next person wants to put up their new sign and and that's kind of the routine in the downtown area unfortunately in the downtown district which would be yes number h i guess mainly it it starts on the second page um the the large gray block I I think for the downtown area I think limiting if we want to expand it and let downtown businesses or offices or whatever do these that for the commercial ones they should be limited to being in in the windows and not freestanding signs and not um, you know projecting lighted boxes or not boxes affixed to the front of the building um, there is and, and unfortunately, I wasn't able to get a photo of it, but um, an example of what I'm referring to is um, on the corner of Green Streets and Railroad Avenue in Westminster, it's the um, Info Pathways building. They have this type of a sign, and really it's, it's essentially a film that's in the window and has a projector to display the images on the film. So it's not like a flat screen TV blocking part of the window. It's not, you know, it's not something attached to the front of the building it's a little more subtle now I'm, I'm sure you can probably make them look very garish but I, I would hope that being within the window is not going to be quite as as in your face so to speak as a box sticking out off the front of the building or you know or attached to the front of the building something like that so if we did want to allow them downtown I would suggest making them a, as and I know the objective of the sign is not to be inconspicuous, but to, to make them 
I don't know, try to be more harmonious with, with the buildings by, by requiring them to be in the windows instead of out on the front. Um, and that's, I don't know if anybody even wants to see them now, <laughs> other than the fire company. Um, well, couldn't it be a, a, a digital sign? I mean, be, couldn't it be like a fixed message, not a necessary a rotating message or a moving message? I mean, can we, can we stipulate maybe something as a fixed message, like a one-liner, or if they have places for a couple lines that they're, they're fixed or not moving or rotating or flashing or, or things you know, like that? Um, that would certainly be one, another approach. Um, the way the code, the way we've defined the electronic message display board is a sign capable of displaying words, symbols, figures, or images that can be electronically controlled by remote or automatic means. So that would be. The city wants to do, right? So that would be, Thanks. right. That would be yeah. the CVS sign, which just has the red letters, but they control it remotely. Right. But it doesn't have like the fancy graphics or create the illusion of movement like the Wants sign does. But they're both the same sign under this definition. They're both met, you know, electronic message display boards or EMDBs. Um, so we could maybe have like a type one, type two, or something like that, where one is, you know, a static message that's controlled remotely. And, you know, that might be type one, and type two would be like the WANTS type where they, you know, have all the, the fancy graphics and moving text and things like that. Well, would we, that's, that's, so I we don't could, think we would want that downtown, right? Right, no. so we, so I mean, we could, we could like create categories and then say, you know, you can do the one type in general business and the other type would be all you could do in the downtown area or maybe all you could do for the school something like that yeah because i certainly wouldn't want flashing lights all at the school right. mainly because it's right across from my bedroom <laughs> what's, what's wrong with that? and i don't want to see a tr hear a train go by on on a, sc on a sc screen or something in the middle of the night or you know or kids out there because they, they all kinds of graphics you can do with these things yeah well again I, you know i I think I understand what you're saying, but don't limit yourself to a fixed static sign because you may want to put more than one message out. That's for sure. Well, well I, I think more than one line, but then would no, you have I'm the line rotate? Well, no. What you could do is, you know, you have one message, yeah. it stays up for so many seconds, then another message comes up. And it's static. Okay, so yeah, I see what you're saying, yeah. But it rotates, the messages rotate. See, the museum might want to show there, two things uh, for two months. That's kind of what we would we got, to do. We're getting a lot of activity. But that's out not there. downtown. In July, and we but I, and I'm okay with that. To a two month deal. As long as we don't have four or five well, different so colors flashing all at the same time. Yeah. I mean, that, that's what draws your what attention. You and, I'm sorry. I say starting in July, the museum is going to have several activities every month. Who? The museum. Oh, okay. So you want one of them. Signs. And and uh, you may want to uh, exhibit two months at a time uh, what's going to be taking place. This is just not going to be downtown, is it? Well, right now, That's right now where the museum is allows nothing. So. That's residential. You can't. Have right. You can't have that. Why not? You're residential. You're residential. That's baloney. <laughs> that's baloney. Well, what do you call it? <clears throat> well, that's not zoned. It's <clears throat> residential. You, you recall we hit the commission. Residential in a store next door. The commission had recommended um, approval of, of some signed code revisions a year <clears throat> or so ago, and, and um, the mayor and council didn't approve them. Um, and they came back with a lot of comments that essentially were to create an overlay zone without actually saying it was creating an overlay zone, but they wanted to treat different areas of the same zoning district differently. So they wanted to create, you know, one area of R7500 where you could have signs, but other areas of R75 where you couldn't have them. And the whole point of the ordinance was to allow the things we allow in residential districts like doctor's offices and libraries and museums and community centers 
to have a sign. But it kind of blew up and has never come back on the, the radar screen since then. So we're stuck. So, you know, when, when Dr. Dow comes in to replace right. his sign, just That's like right. when, I, when I first started, when Dr. Scott left and he put a new sign up, somebody said, you know, did he get a permit for that? And I looked in the book and I'm like, he can't, but he had one. <laughs> And that's so, a, it, you know, see, so from the railroad to, to the roundabout, that's what you have. You have a house every now and then, and you have a lot of businesses every so, now and then. Right. So, you know, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's just something that, that creates difficulty administering the code that I was hoping to, to, to clean up. But sidebar conversation, I guess. So that, that's where the museum falls is, you know, right now it's kind of in limbo, although there are... Um, there is under signs allowed in all zones, which is also something we might want to look at for the fire department or the schools. Um, let's see if I can get the right section here. Okay, on the first page, D has bulletin boards towards the bottom of the page. And this can be used in any zone by religious, civil, or government organizations to notify the public of coming events. So the churches, for example, can say, you know, come worship at 930, this week's sermon is, you know, whatever. Um, and they can do that, even if they're in a residential zone, which several of the churches are. Um, you know, the... the um, well, that's kind of an overlay. Kind of. Kind of. But it's, but it's the type of organization. Now, right. That's what makes it the overlay. Right. Now, you could argue, I think, that a you know, local museum, is that a civil type organization? Does that fit kind of like the library does? They're both in the same zoning district. They're both in R7500, but they're both you know, organizations geared towards the public. And you want, I would think, would want the public, them to be able to notify the public of what, what they're doing. And we'll use the library as, as an example. So say the library wanted, you know, technically, they can't have any sign under, under you know, residential district. But they're a library. They've got a sign on the building. They've got a sign. I think they've got a sign out front. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. You know, technically, there are 7,500, just like the museum, just like Dr. Dow, Dr. Gallianitis, and... Um, um, oh gosh, Dr. Linthicum. Um, you know, they're all R75. Um, but I guess getting back to the bulletin board piece, um, since we already allow places like the fire department as a civic organization to have a bulletin board, maybe we could add this section, you know, add under here that they can do a message board. Um, you know, limit the size of it so it's no bigger than they could have, you know, or maybe so that it would actually be a little smaller than like a regular bulletin board um, and that they can use it to do, you know, on-premise services or things that are happening on site, um, you know, or community events, something like that. And, and for this language, I just kind of cut and pasted from what was in general business. We probably want to tweak that some. But, um, you know, that would be one way that you could accommodate the school and the fire department as, you know, as civic organizations or government organizations and let them have their signs. Um, let me be selfish at this moment. Where does the city stand? Okay. And that would... That would... Fall well, that's a government the organization. Government organization. Go government organization fit right there. In, in this... Indeed. 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 Okay. So essentially, that's what we've got down at Memorial Park now is a bulletin board. Correct. But that wouldn't be the same as what Wance has, though, right? Because yes. that's where my concern is. That's what it's allowing. And that's, and that's what, right now, that's, right now there's one type of, one category, which is electronic message display board. And I'll, again, I'll use the, you know, the, the one at CVS, right. which you guys approved, was the second one we had in town is a lot different than the one at Lance when you go look at them, but they're both the same thing as far as the code definition goes. So if you wanted to limit 
some areas to like the type that CVS has, where it's just okay. the letters and not the fancy images like the Wants one is, you would, I think, have to create two tiers within the message to boards section. Well, how would Maybe you just... one has the ability to do all the fancy graphics and we figure out how to say that. That day's right. coming. That day's coming. And the other You're would be... You're going to need a flash and sign. And the other one would be just the ability to, to have text you know, that's remotely controlled and can maybe change every so many seconds or something. I thought that's why it was all put to the planning and zoning on approval of them, so it wouldn't have to worry about which sign they put where. Well, we would need guidelines, but why would you give me one sign and you another sign? So how would you distinguish between you getting one well, that has, I'm has... Still going back to that's why they put, they, whoever put it on the planning and the zoning. And I, I guess either to, way, we would need to know. I mean, it wouldn't be fair unless we had some guidelines. And I guess to that point, if you were if you were consistent in in how you ruled on it, that you know that maybe you know in the general business district, it's kind of more an anything goes kind of thing, like the Wants sign. Perhaps if it's in a residential area, it's limited to. The CVS type, you know, where it's just the lettering that they can change remotely and, and things like that. Um, you and know, then downtown. Or perhaps if it's visible from a dwelling, maybe you limit it, you know, so that you're not seeing the, you know, the race car go by on the sign out your bedroom window or whatever it might be. Um, so, there, I mean, there's a few ways you can, you could regulate it if we, assuming we stick with having to get planning commission approval for any of them. And that's that's a whole other question is you know whether you want to do that or not. Uh, so we're going to have to think out of the box on this. Do what? We're going to have to think out of the box. Right. This is something right. that they will never be right. We have to Can think out of the box. It's something yeah. that's been in the town for years. There will yeah. never be right. Oh. There will always be something wrong with the way they're right. Oh, we'll never yeah. get signs right. No. 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 Well, can you no. can you draft something like you just said? Uh, for next month's meetings and let us bounce that around a little bit. I mean, I personally kind of like what you were saying about the different zones being able to either have the one sign or the other sign, depending on the v visibility of it from somebody's area. So, so like when multiple, does, multiple when levels it, of the sign type. Yeah. yeah. And when does this board expect be ready to put this to code. About six months. They want to get well, it done quicker keep, than that. I got keep an, in, I've got a bid right now for okay. it. We're going to well, award. Well, well I feel like you're putting a cart before the horse. There. Well, can, can we do a tech? Can this be done through a text change, or do we have to go through public hearing? Well, it. I mean, it, it is a text change, but it does because it's zoning. It does go through a public hearing. And, and again, just so everybody, just to remind everybody of the procedure. The mayor and council introduce the ordinance. You guys get to comment on it. And then your comment goes back to the mayor and council for their consideration. But ultimately, the ordinance starts and is voted on by mayor and council. Now, I, I suppose as a courtesy, you guys are often asked what you think about something before any ordinance is drafted. But procedurally, it starts with the mayor and council. So, you know, you guys might love the idea of expanding it. I don't know how the mayor and council feel about it. I don't know if they've talked about it at council meetings. I think they wanted it at the park. Well, they approved the, the, sign, the purchase of the sign. But That's I have not sign. gotten any, I've not been contacted by any one as to how they want the code changed. I think we're stepping a little bit ahead of ourselves so then if it has I to come from the if, council. I don't know if mayor and What's council want yeah. to entertain. No, they, I don't think we other. are stepping ahead of ourselves. Um, I, I suspect they'll probably say, what does the Planning Commission want? Right. So then let's try to get, get, get our ducks in order so that we know what we want so we can address our comments when they, or if not enough, we have it first, we can present it. At least get a feel for if, right. if we're, you know, heading down the wrong path or not. You know, right. they may say, absolutely not, we don't want those things downtown. Well, and that's, my thoughts on it are downtown, I want it as restrictive as possible because those things are just light pollution. That's what it comes down to. And we have residents downtown that jump at the first chance to complain about something. 
and this is all we're going to hear about for the next 10 years are all these lights in their windows. I think if it's if we're considering allowing them in residential areas, then it needs to be only during daylight hours they can run. They have Good to be deal. off I overnight. I like that too because I got a lot of the downtown. Well, that makes sense because a business is typically, you know. Right, and a lot of but a lot of them like these signs because it's 24-hour exposure all night long. These things are doing their. But I think in residential, not at all. I don't Doesn't think like we it. should start with spot. Right spot zoning with this, something like this. You got to think out of the box and think about what's going to happen ten years from now, but five years from that'll now. Never, that never works. Well, it's going to have to work. Okay. We'll give him one. Every, everything you do is it's a living document. And I know. Things change. I mean, That's you know, right. the reason you're addressing this, George, is you know when Wilson Avenue first went in, there was you know you're lucky to have a sign. <laughs> See, this, this is a change. Your request is for a change. And there's going to be other people want changes. And it's going to continue to change year after That's year. That's point, George. Right. I fear it's, change. Huh? So I do fear I. change. Gonna, it, I gonna, agree with not having real bright lights downtown. Yeah. I right. as, as restrictive as possible downtown, it's, it's going to end up looking like the Vegas Strip because people don't have the taste to keep it. And that's why you need a body to vote on it and control it. Right. So you, Somebody. You not understand necessarily. my dilemma. I say Ollie. Money's in the budget. Huh? I say you control it. Expires June 30th. <laughs> we got the bids for the sign. We're ready to award. Uh, I guess we can award and just sit back and wait 10 years for a decision. No, I think if we keep, I think, I think if we keep moving forward like we're doing right now sure. and let's get something together. And then That's our liaison can take it back to the city start. council keep, uh, keep, get right. those motivated on the same you. level but you, you understand my timeline <laughs> well, you, had, you might not be able All to keep say it. that was just poor planning on somebody's part you might no, not I don't be, think so you might because not be planning you planned plan. plan out facade the box well, it was. That's what comes from thinking outside the box. <laughs> That's right. That's See, George, take note. Yep. That's what happens. First thing I'm going to put up there, Wilson Avenue is gone. Now, so what is, what is the park down there? That's open space. How is that zoned? Open space? As Just well. open space. Yeah. But that's the same as a school, right? It's open school. space. So if you do want... On, it's got a house on the other side of the road. It's yeah, it butts right. up against... Yeah, okay, well, I was just trying to right. thank well, the zoning, yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah. So I'm with you. I'm trying to work to get this moving. I say the park is sandwiched in between industrial and, was it R6000 or 7500? Residential. Residential, right, but it's... Right. What are those little ranchers down by the park, Jim? I think they're actually commercial. I mean, it's residential use. I thought they, they wanted to get this through by June. <laughs> Seems like we're the only one working on it, right? Yeah. It's never been brought to council. In fact, the first I heard of this sign was when we started talking about it because the existing council never talked about it. About what? The electronic sign at the park. Well, it had to. It was approved. It just came Well, up. it was pre-existing council. That's true. Right. So it's not legal. <laughs> Are you playing, you know? Go ahead, say it, Jim. Please. Everybody had a with you now? The ones that are in the city closest to the park are actually um, general business. Okay. So, well, so then you have the, the yellow in, ones. And then the ranchers, I mean, um, the central room and sun room is, is the end one here. They're not in the city. And then the last house is not in the city, but they're all sure here. Right. I mean, it's residential use. What well, the, they, they could put a sign there now, then. What? The city? Yeah. I like the way you're talking. Yeah, I, well, what he just said, I would say they could. So, so, and again, Great. You know, you're, it's you're my budget. Have, right. You're allowed to have a bullet board. Which they have. Right, which right. we have, um, and which the school has, and which mm -hmm. the fire company has. Mm -hmm. right? So, you know, that again, that's one, that's one way of, expanding the code and limiting it to, you know, more of the community governmental type things, um, you know, and again, but I do think that, that perhaps having two categories or two tiers of the signage, you know, and maybe the one that we, the real fancy, you know, high tech one that has the illusion movement and all that stuff, maybe, maybe they get limited to the commercial area and, you know, just the, display of text or whatever gets allowed to be in 
Well, I don't think you can restrict it to type of sign, just to what's displayed on the sign. I mean, if they want full color, but you simply say transitions no, no closer than 10 seconds apart. And that's, no. And that's something that you right. could regulate, but it would be... I mean, but, but you can't... I mean, are you going to restrict them to a monochromatic as opposed to a full color sign? And that, that would be up to... Or, right. Well, you know, actually, this is wide... I mean, this is there's gray areas because it's wide open. Because... It says that it requires planning and planning commission's approval. All we got to do is be consistent on how we approve and what we use for our guidelines for approving. Well, they do every two years at this cut So basically, if you look at D here, we could approve the town because it's a government organization. Right. And we could, and we, and as, as the zoning here, we could stipulate what can be done and what couldn't be. It could have a false true to the fire company right. because now we're talking about downtown, but we still requires all we need to be is consistent yeah, right. and, and set some type of guideline. And then you can move right on out to the school or anyone else or even to, to George and even in his case, we just deny it. Amen. <laughs> He's not there. Can't deny it. But I mean, <laughs> but I think it's wide open. The red is... Is what the red is what you? Oh, so that's not the code. that's not existing. That's no. not existing. The code does not speak of these boards. The red, the red was what I put in there to generate some discussion because I figured if I didn't come up with something, we'd all be. I thought you said you paste. Uh, yeah, I thought you went through and picked. So I thought you picked no. it up from somewhere and put it in there. No. The, the black text is the cut and paste of the red. It's a gray area. It's gray area. It's yeah. It's it, it, it is. But I was just trying to look it's at ways that we can right. tease everyone in a timely well, manner. He's got something to put on paper, so we might as well stop. We'll keep changing. So where are we at, Jim? We're back to what? Um, no signs. I kind of like what you, I kind of like that in red. If you read it enough times, you can make it say anything. And it's I, all I think how, that, that, how you interpret it. If you do. And I read it that you can do that right now. Right. That's what I just said, yeah. If, um, if we, if we do sign require, right now. I love it. But, but that's not text. If we require uh, it to come to the Planning Commission, I think it would be a reasonable step that you guys would look at the specifics of each proposed sign. Right look at you know what's around it where it is what the impact would be it would be on the agenda so you know and we would post the property I would imagine um, right so if somebody you know if neighbors are concerned they can come out and see what's being presented and voice their opinions um, you know so I suppose you could you know and again I guess consistency is the key mm -hmm. would be you know if it's if it's adjacent to dwellings or visible from dwellings, you take that into consideration with what you'll allow them to, you know, what you'll approve. See, but those are things that need to be in writing because there's gonna come a time yes. 10 years from now that we will not be on this commission anymore and we want the people in 10 years to understand why we did that. Our, our line of thinking. And there can be, The, the level of detail you want to put in the code. Henry, um, this is all your fault for wanting that stupid sign. So, <laughs> But the sign's legal the way I read it, if we go ahead. So, so it says so, bulletin board. So, so I know it's, we're, we're dragging this out. That's it's going okay. to be, be a couple of months. Yeah. But that's can, can, you, can, yeah. can you get... The city can, shouldn't can have you, been asked for a sign. Together that we can present to the city council that this is what we're looking at <laughs> get there blessing or approval or direction to make this happen or let them so, and then, but then but before we I think we need to almost have like a workshop or, or time or another meeting like this where we can go through and break each zone down that's my fault and then put the specifics down see the city wants a sign before they have any regulation for it we already got regulations well, but we need to like say being consistent is what we really need to be. Okay. Everyone. So, so I will put something together for the mayor and council to weigh in on, um, and 
the, I guess, bullet points that, that we want to have in there is that it provides um, the opportunity for expanded use of the message boards, um, that we want to try to accommodate the um, public and civic organizations, um, such as the schools and the fire department. Just like you have religious, um, civic, we want to have some mechanism through which the planning commission can um, establish or can limit the signs based on the um, you know property specifics, the proposal specifics, um, such as proximity to residential units. Um, usage, my gosh, we put usage on the on the uh, on the. Uh, rental places out there uh because of carol vista so we could put usage like you say during certain hours well actually the board of appeals can do that oh, i think okay. you recommended it okay and, uh, board of appeals approves everything i don't i don't think they actually ended up doing the um the hours the hours I'm talking about the storage community storage because because the um the hours we we had talked about that when when they went to expand the non-conforming use to do the mini storage up front, and the um, the residents behind there, um, because because the board of appeals was speaking to the front part of the property, they were not in a position to regulate the hours on the existing use. The developer was willing to do that. But that wasn't what was before the board. What was before the board was for the front of the property, and it really didn't matter to the residents, you know, if the front of the property was used right. okay. around the clock or not, because it was already buffered by the rear part, which was already in use twenty four seven. So, um, so they, it, I believe that dropped. I, I'd have to look at the case. Okay. Well, I think they ended up not, not limiting it. Um, so okay, so we want some some ability to regulate um, the 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 type of sign or the display of it um, based <coughs> on where where it's going to be right. Does that mean you need to keep a certain amount of control of it because we're controlling the plants? No. With it, with it coming before a planning commission, either myself or whoever's sitting here, you know, six months from now or whatever that might be, is going to meet with them, you know, to get them on the agenda. So, you know, the zoning administrator will have the opportunity to kind of vet the, the sign before it comes to you. And, you know, that person can always say, you know, you're right across the street from, you know, an apartment building. So you're going to be more likely to get approved for this. And hopefully that kind of um, discussion before it gets to you guys will... will right, I think... Will, will uh, yeah, help that's... So, um, Don't you have to deal with the height of these signs, too? Sorry? Height. Don't you have to deal with the <coughs> um, Yeah, they'll they have would, height. 35 was it 35? I didn't I didn't put anything in specific to height that wasn't already in the district regulations so in the downtown um, well in the general business they can be 35 feet up to 35 feet high um, I think the only one that's close to that might be the shopping center most everybody else I think is like at 25 or so um, in the downtown district not sure they're limited to 12 feet high in downtown for freestanding signs. Um, you them will need about 20 feet. They're not going to get it. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I had suggested a while well, ago with, these, write, with the message write the boards thing so we can get it. that maybe maybe I'm we just, also I'll put a damn sign up and they'll find me. Okay. I mean, the, like see that happen. The code doesn't specifically say this we'll right now that. under um, It'd be legal. Under, under bulletin boards. Technically, I guess a bulletin board is is what the school has. Okay. But it's really like a big pole sign. I mean it's it's up there, you know, fifteen feet in the air or however tall it is. We could consider if they do these message board types, 
that the bulletin board has to be a monument style that's like down at the ground oh, rather yeah, than up, you know, 12 feet. <coughs> maybe that's maybe that's kind of a trade off that they, you know, do something that's like, okay. And before I forget, I told the fire company I would share this to give you an idea what they're looking at. Henry, is there going to be two sides on it? Yeah. Just like it is right now. Huh? Just like it is right now. What what is this? Fire companies. That's what we want. What the fire department would would like to do. Um, this is the image that they're looking at. So it'd be like a brick flat on the building with the with the screen, you know, tucked inside of the brick monument. It would be the same size as what they have now, which is the the bulletin board that's on site. It would replace that. And, and that'll um, be double sided. Yes. So be, double sided. The would be like six by six. Is yours double sided? Yes. So, but the screen itself would be, I think they said it's on, it's on there. Like well, you put the cart before the horse there. So, you guys got the No, the difference the is they haven't ordered we it. We haven't yet. ordered oh, it yet. Okay. <laughs> no, we're. So our is, sign is in real, it, it's yet so yet bad either. of shape that the light in it doesn't work, the letters won't stay on. It's. It, <laughs> so. It's, it's, and, they, and they have a hard time spelling with those letters. We do, because we're missing a couple. At least this has spell check on it. <laughs> I, guess, I guess where I'm going with this is that perhaps the trade-off to allow somebody to use the message board type sign is that they put it in a darn nice casing of some kind. Hey, we got that. So, you know, so maybe instead of allowing it to be a full sign like Lance or CBS have, because right now even the bulletin boards aren't limited to that. You know, maybe to do the message board, maybe it'd be limited to a monument type sign. Well, why? It, Rather than a There's not sign. many well, people downtown can do there. one like the fire company can because they don't have <laughs> space, products. right. See, signage. There's, a, there's an art and science to science as well. And it's and, lost on this city. I'm sorry? It's lost in this city. Obvious. But the reason the school has theirs up there is because of the sight distance you got. You put the monument down, put a monument there, there nobody's going to see it. No, it's going to be too low. Because you want to see that sign when you hit the top of the hill. That's when you right. press that top of the hill. That's right. And that's why it's the, they got the height. But that's only 12 feet. So 12 feet's not so bad in an area like that. But definitely wouldn't work downtown. That, that sign well, you know like what I'm going to do, Brad? It's been there forever. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to put it in storage. In 50 years from now, somebody's going to go, what that thing is. Yeah, but you got it at a good price. Might take 50, 50 years, years from now. Get this through. <laughs> so all right, so do, you, do you have enough to work on, Jim? We all dead center here. Right. Jim, I have several notes for you. All right. All right. So I'll, I'll Let's go on. try to put together some bullet points and we'll see if Mayor Council think we're going in the right direction with it. And so what are we doing? What's the plan? I'm going to put something together for Brad to speak to at the at the next workshop. So um, you're not going to present any ordinance and draft it off. I don't think we're that far along. Holy no! So when when is the next meeting? I thought we was. When is your next meeting? I don't know. June where what? We, are. we have June the first. Sign or, it, we'll never get this. No, it'll the be the eighth <laughs> well, the workshop. If we get some buy-in, yeah, yeah okay. and then 13th will on be on the points of the meeting night. Carnival. Okay. okay. Sure. Yeah. Because it's second Monday and then preceding Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Well, the, mm -hmm. our intention to use it is just to have, just to put, replace the sign. Possibly change the sign. In other words, have more than one message. Yeah. And that's it. It's good, you know, we're not looking to put fireworks in Are it. you putting one up or four? I only put one. Double sided, right? Yeah. With football players on it so you can show the kids playing football and stuff like that. Well, there's a football field there. Just ask. Yes, the message board. Okay. I heard it was a jumbotron. <laughs> well, there's football a football field accident. put there. Though. I mean, if we got to make a decision here, we need to know what the the outcome is going to be of it. Sign, put all kinds of stuff on I it. I think we got to get control for that. What they're going to put up. Yeah. The only the only thing we were looking for is to be able to put messages out. Like you, you but now. you can do that now. <laughs> but, but we can't, in other words, we can't change, we can't put multiple messages out. We got more than one event going on, we can't do that. Right. Okay, 27th. All right. I think we've covered that for, for tonight. Uh, yeah, we, 
Let me see. Anybody have anything? Wait, George, you have not, anything? No, I don't, Doug. Okay. Yeah. Nothing, sir. Ollie? Nope. Jim? Okay, next meeting should be June 27th. Sound good? Sounds good. I move for adjournment. Is there a second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I can't remember how long I've been here. <laughs> well, I tell you I've, been, what, I've been trying to look that up. Well, I, I, I know every year Can we, we, count we the talk rings? about science. Will that tell us? No. I said every other year. <laughs> well, sometimes we talk about it.